Hey guys, how's it going? Eli here back with another video where today we're going to be starting a mini series about opening up your own LGS. Before we jump into it, as always getting out of the way, we do weekly giveaways. All you have to do to enter is be subscribed, leave a like, comment down below, and of course hit the notification bell on any of the videos we post each and every week. Since you can comment and like in each video, so that allows you for multiple entries. And we've got three winners each and every week, so that's multiple opportunities to win. Um, outside of that, if you want to support the channel, we have many links down in the description below, whether it be, of course, checking out our Pokemon USA official mystery packs and products on our website, PokemonUSA.com, or checking out our single selection at our LGS at E4 Cards and more, or if you just want to be a part of the Patreon and be able to gain access to wholesale product as well as some other analytical tools to be in the know when it comes to investing in Pokemon cards and products. You can also check that out on our Patreon. And then lastly, if you just want to be a part of the community, then you can check out our Discord. Links down in the description below to access a lot of amazing deals when it comes to Pokemon products and prices we are sharing in the community. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's just jump right into it. Uh, so today's topic, like I said before, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to try and do this actually more consistently. I want to do more mini series. I know that, you know, with the market being a lot slower, I've taken your guys' feedback and I'm saying to myself, okay, no more, you know, just purely investment uh, only, you know, top five videos and that kind of stuff and not just the, oh, well, we haven't seen a reprint in over a month. So we're just going to talk about the small little news that's going on. No, we're going to talk about some important series for those of you guys that have questions, whether it be opening up an LGS and so many other things. So uh, for today, that's going to be the mini series we're going to be talking about. We've got a, a bunch of other mini series that we will be uh, starting throughout the channel. But um, of course, with everyone asking the question, we'll just jump into the first part of opening up an LGS, right? Uh, the first most important thing, of course, is liquidity. Uh, how much does it cost to open up an LGS? Now, this, of course, is going to be different for each and every person uh, when it comes to the market that they're in, because in some locations, uh, real estate is a lot cheaper. Some places, it's uh, much more expensive. Same thing goes for just, you know, general furniture cost and so on and so forth. So there's many factors. But I can tell you that in my specific location that we were in, to be extremely comfortable, it's going to run you at least 60000 And if you want to be extremely, extremely comfortable, then it's going to push upwards of ninety to to 100000 um, And And that's something that might sound crazy for a lot of people, but there's a lot of things you have to take into consideration. Of course, you're going to have to get a lease location, which depending upon where you live, that could be a couple thousand dollars to upwards of five or six thousand dollars. Of course, if you're also wanting to be ahead of it when it comes to uh, back stock of inventory, Inventory, you're going to need roughly around anywhere between ten dollars to $20,000 worth of product, both for the front of the store to be able to display stuff and the back of the store to be able to restock. Um, and then moving on to uh, general furniture, you're going to need uh, display shelves and cabinets to be able to store a lot of your cards and product that you're going to be selling. You're going to be needing tables if you're trying to run an event space or you're trying to, of course, have people set up and open packs and product while you're there so that in encourages them to stick around and, uh, you know, be a part of the community. Like there's a lot of things and, and don't forget employees. Uh, there's a lot of things you got to take into consideration when it comes to opening up your game store. So um, I would say you can totally do this differently depending upon your market. And like I said before, some places, you know, minimum wage is cheaper or labor is cheaper. Some places lease agreements are a lot more affordable, or at least that's what I would presume because it feels expensive. <laughs> and, and, and there's so many other things, but that is what I would kind of say is your general price that you're looking for when opening up your own game store. Now, that's just the start of it is what you need. It's just your liquidity, right? Now, moving into the process of how you're going to get it rolling, right? And that starts off with finding a location. And boy, was it probably the biggest pain in the butt, I would say, to find yourself a great location. And you know what's funny? What I'm going to tell you guys, I'm not going to try and discourage you guys because I think it's awesome in the journey that I've gone through to open up this game store. What I am going to tell you is I'm going to be extremely realistic and show you all the difficult things you have to go through step by step to make something like this happen, right? And of course, um, like I said before, 
before. Uh, that being up next is lease agreement. So uh, in a location where uh, it, our LGS currently is, uh, leases are few and far between, especially if you're looking for ones that are medium to high demand. Uh, low demand areas are low demand areas for a reason, right? So you're not trying to go in those areas. You're trying to go to ones that has a decent amount of foot traffic and you gotta be able to take that into consideration. And you can sit here and you can say, okay, well, I see a ton of them on the market, right? Well, realtors, uh, specifically commercial realtors, had a terrible experience with that. Half the time they don't even get back to you and then half the time if they do get back to you, um, the product is no longer available or the lease location is no longer available. And then when they finally get back to you about the lease location being available, um, either there's a pending agreement that has already gone before you or it takes them forever to get back to you. And it's the most painful thing ever. We were expecting to be able to get in the store by sometime uh, you know, early to middle of September and and of course, per our lease agreement that we signed, at latest, it was gonna be October 1st. We didn't end up getting until October 3rd. So um, that was really fun to say the least, having to wait so long, especially considering that we had about a, less than a month uh, to be able to open the store, which, uh, you know, when everyone is trying to scramble and get things ready, it can definitely be a huge pain in the butt. So. I would definitely say uh, that's another huge important thing you got to consider when you're saying to yourself, okay, what goes into opening up an LGS? You, you got to find the location because location is extremely important, right? Then the next most important thing is getting the product, right? And now thankfully, obviously having done an online store for the past couple of years, I already had some credibility in the market. I already had connections to distributors. So that part for me, thankfully I was lucky it was really easy. But for most people in the market, it is not easy to get a distributor, right? Like there's some you can go and apply for if you are a local game store, but a lot of the time they want history, right? Um, have you done sales before online? Have you done sales before with other distributors? Um, as far as it goes, are you okay with getting limitation on allocated product, et cetera, et cetera. And with that, of course, being said, you can sit here and say, oh cool, I just got a new distributor, right? But unless you're expecting out the gate to be consistently buying a ton of product from them, or you're expecting to, of course, have previous history, then it's gonna be very difficult for them to want to give you allocated product because you have to build up that relationship and credibility. And if you haven't built that up elsewhere, then it's hard for them to, of course, go off of that. And if you're saying to yourself that you're a new store and you haven't had an LGS before um, that has had, of course, connections or an online retailer that has had connections to a distro, um, getting product is gonna be extremely difficult consistently. Now you could, of course, you know, it's pretty easy, I would say, depending upon who your distributor is, to get Magic product in Yu-Gi-Oh, but Pokemon's a whole different animal. That stuff is allocated up the butt. Um, of course, you can totally find some, um, but for most people, if you're starting a new account, it's very difficult because you have to have already built up that relationship to have a decent amount of allocated product and it's a time uh, process. So you start up a new LGS uh, fresh, then you're gonna have to wait some time realistically before you're able to get a lot of Pokemon product. And that's why some LGSs and game stores end up actually buying secondhand off the market and upselling, which is why you see so many high-end prices like some you know, Pokemon, of course, um, you know, local game stores that that's kind of what they want to predominantly sell or pushing 140, 150, 160 for booster boxes such as Chilling Rain and so on and so forth. And first and foremost, the margins on that, uh, even if you're saying you're buying at market, that's too expensive. But I digress with that. It's not simple as, oh, I get a distributor, I now get unlimited product, right? So that's, of course, uh, another crazy thing you're gonna take into consideration, right? Um, and so for this video too, I wanna kind of mention this briefly. This whole topic is, you know, we've been open for about a month now, and this whole topic is going to be, or today's video is purely just gonna be, hey, here's the first steps to opening. The next videos are gonna be the progression as we, you know, move things along and kind of talk about the inside works of, hey, it's month three, here's where we are, month six, here's where we are. So this is just first month, every Everything we know so far of opening it and then of course um, where our progression is now right um, and so after you've gotten your lease agreement after you've gotten your distributors after you've gotten your liquidity to be able to do all this um, next step is of course set up next step is finding employees that you can trust um, that are capable of understanding how to run a business because I know a lot of people of course that want to open an LGS think it's all fun and games but there needs to be that balance of knowing one your product and your market that you're in and then two of course understanding how important it is 
to be a business owner and be able to understand that, hey, sure, this is a fun thing to do, but this is still a business at the end of the day and you have to be able to make business decisions, whether that be uh, monitoring, keeping track of your inventory and stock, uh, being able to do product count, um, being able to, of course, and this might sound crazy, but <laughs> manage a POS system, which for some people it might seem super simple, but you know, training some people to do that, it's crazy to think how difficult that can be. Um, and, and there's more things I can keep going into, but I'm gonna digress there. Um, but having a team, unless you're gonna be able to do it all by yourself, um, especially if you're trying to grow and expand, it's gonna be difficult. And maybe you say to yourself at the very beginning, oh, I'm just gonna do it by myself, right? Well, you can do that, but there goes your, your life, right? Um, unless you're saying you're only gonna be open for odd weird hours, which is not gonna be good for consistency of a customer base, you're gonna more than likely wanna have your store open from 10 to eight or 11 to seven or, you know, at least eight plus hours a day available. You can't you can't just say, oh, I'm gonna be open for two hours here, two hours there, three hours here, three hours there, which you might not think, uh, well, who would ever do that? Well, <laughs> there are other stores that do that and I assure you it is frustrating <laughs> as a customer. And so you got to be able to have someone that can at least have your back, whether that be a business partner or whether it be, you know, an employee that you can trust, whatever that is. Um, it's important to have that when you're first starting off because your expectations that, hey, we just started the business, our expected growth is not going to, of course, be extremely rapid or that's what you would think being a new store. And so you have to hope for the best, but prepare for the worst, right? Um, and so that's kind of the next most important thing. Now that you've gotten all these steps out of the way, and hopefully, of course, you've got your business acumen to be able to help you make these decisions, the next step is how are people gonna know about you, right? And that's, once again, knowing your market, knowing how you can market yourself, right? How creative are you gonna be about it, right? Are you going to be in the local newspaper? Are you gonna be on a local news channel? Are you going to be in a coupon shopper? Are you gonna go and try and do events for schools and be like, hey guys, uh, do you mind if we come and start a club with you guys and let people know that we're open? Are you going to, of course, um, try and go to other local game stores and try and steal their customers? Like, I don't know, I'm just throwing things out there. Like, what are you going to do to be creative, especially depending upon your market, how many competitors do you have? Is there a high demand for where you live? Is there not a high demand? Do you think you're gonna be able to differentiate yourself from those that are in your market? And if there isn't anyone in your market, how do you know there's anyone that wants to be a part of the market that you're trying to sell to? Um, there's of course n so many factors that come into marketing and knowing your target audience and knowing what the real demand is for the product that you're trying to do, right? And so you have to be smart when it comes to knowing that. Um, and that's a lot of th things that people don't take into consideration. They expect that, oh, people are just gonna walk in the door because they're just gonna know we're here, right? Um, and it's not that simple. You got to be able to have a really good brand that you're able to market for yourself, right? And you can't just slap on a logo, on a sign, expect people to come in, not to mention too, if you got a really bad logo um, and people don't, and it might sound crazy, right? But if you don't have a distinguishable logo that people can remember or a name that people can, of course, remember, then it's gonna be even harder for authentic growth of your overall uh, store because if it's not one that I can remember and you know I'm not gonna try and throw shade at anyone but uh, there's one specific uh, store that I know of right and when I think of the name of the store it's an article of clothing is what the name of the store is right but you never would have guessed it, it is actually a sports and hobby shop when you look it up online all that comes up are specific articles of clothing and the location that they're in is not a very open location when it comes to um, general street view of traffic. So when you are looking for a general cards and product, they're not one of the top search results on Google. And when you try and type in their name, they are also not one of the top search results on Google because you have so many others for apparel and clothing. And so if from that perspective, not only is their brand uh, very difficult to research, but also when you look at their street logo too, there's no indication that says, hey, we're a hobby shop, no colorful, you know, co no colorful or vibrant font or anything in terms of logo design that shows you that's what they do. It's just their name, in cursive, and you, for all you know, it's an apparel store, right? Uh, so as crazy as it sounds, that is extremely, extremely important for you to be able to garner that market audience knowing what kind of store you are. And these seem like, and for some people, 
Um, this seems like a lot of things that are very rhetorical. You shouldn't have to, of course, know these things, but it is still very important and a lot of people don't know when it comes to opening up that store. Okay, so now that you're putting everything all together, right? You've got your store, you've got your connections, you've found your target audience, you've found your market, you've found your name and everything. Now that it's all together, right? You're starting to get customers, things are starting to grow, right? What now is the, of course, next thing to consider? Well, now we're going into our business acumens. If, of course, you have those. Um, <clears throat> if you don't, then this is something that's going to be an awakening for you to understand, right? What are the prices you're going to put on your product, right? And for some people, this might come as a shock. When it comes to LGSs, there are very thin margins. This is not something where you're making 50 to 100% margins. Of course, if you can, you can of course mark them up and hope that people buy it. Uh, but for our game store specifically, right? We're buying booster boxes and I'll be 100% transparent. We're buying booster boxes at $86 a piece and we're selling them for anywhere between 105, 110, 100, depending upon how high demand, right? That's not a lot of margin, right? We're trying to shoot for at least 20 to 40% in terms of uh, if we can, of course, hit that mark. And you might say that like, oh, 20 to 40%, like that might seem good when you hear that number, but for general retail, um, you're shooting for 50 to 100% margin, especially too with my business partners, um, the other industry that they have been in for the longest time. Um, and they own multiple other shops, uh, their margins are one, two, 300% for the product that they sell. So it's very much like, okay, this is a little bit of a step down, right? So the next question is, are you gonna be able to live off those margins, right? And are you going to only be able to live off of sealed product margins for booster boxes or elite trainer boxes and so on and so forth, right? And if you're saying to yourself, okay, well now uh, these margins in store are this much, right? Cause 110, you got 86, that's gonna, you know, best case scenario, run you about another $26 that's what 30 ish percent 35 percent best case scenario if you're saying on the high end unless it's a high-end booster box that you're selling you're gonna have to find creative ways to make money right whether it be buying collections and flipping them on tcg player whether it be trying to rent out or sell theme decks that you can throw of course in as a competitive uh, player landscape try and host events where you of course charge a small fee whatever that may be you have to be creative when it comes to selling you can't just have product and expect that hey i have product this is it because you have to make minimums on your sales, right? If you say that you're paying someone minimum wage in an area, and let's say for the sake of the argument, that minimum wage in that area is like $12. And then on top of that, they're helping you out working 40 hours a week. On top of that, you've got your monthly expenses, whether it be utilities, rent, and all these other things, you're having to make minimum to be able to survive. And that minimum could be anywhere between six, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars like it could be a lot for you to have to be able to make that to survive as your general net profit so that's something that you can't just say oh look awesome i made twenty thousand dollars this month and it's gross and by gross i mean like gross profit you're only making 30 percent realistically of that twenty thousand if we're saying on the good end and then that's going to be six thousand dollars and then you've got ten thousand dollars of ulterior expenses that you're going to have to account for look you just lost four thousand dollars your first month and that's of course just a rough uh, you know estimate is what we're saying so it's it's not that simple it's not that black and white right you have to be creative on being explosive when it comes to your overall sales and being able to rapidly expand your overall business. And of course, with that, I think the next most important thing that you're gonna have to consider as well is, okay, I found ways to be creative. Now that I've found ways to be creative, what do I do with all this money that I'm starting to make? Hypothetically, if you are getting to the step, I think now the next most important thing is reinvesting in the business, right? There's a reason why you hear a lot of the times big business owners, multi-millionaires, multi-billionaires, very rarely do you ever hear like, oh, why are they never getting taxed, right? Well, when it comes to the tax code in the United States, there's an incentive for the continued growth of a business because obviously as the continued growth of the business, that supplies more jobs, that stimulates the economy, that allows expansion for potential corporate taxes. And so there's a huge incentive for the government to give tax breaks to those that reinvest in their business. And so if you are making money, 
you shouldn't be pulling profits because all that's doing is it's causing you to have a slower progression of growth where if you're consistently reinvesting all of that liquidity back in your business and not taking those payouts, then you're going to be able to grow at a lot faster rate. Because of course, if you are saying to yourself, all right, well, I started off the month with $20,000 worth of inventory, I was able to burn through that $20,000 worth of inventory. And I knew that if I had more product readily available that I could have sold it for faster, right? Well then, now that you have that extra bankroll, you get more inventory, so then you can sell that product faster. Or if you're saying to yourself, okay, I know that if I were to scale my TCG direct sales online, and I know that I could of course be able to make more sales if I had more inventory consistently, and that could of course bring in a higher rate of revenue monthly for online sales for single cards, and then you're gonna have to go in and you're gonna have to start buying more bulk or buying more collections. And maybe you said to yourself, oh, there were some collections that I had to pass up on because I didn't have the revenue to be able to do so, and now I do. Well, now you can start aggressively buying up those collections that you're gonna be able to flip and sell online, whether it be in your online store or whether it be at TCG Player. So you have to, of course, be able to take all these things into account when continuously growing and expanding your business. It is very much a progression of investing, investing, investing. And it's extremely important that you're smart about this because the minute you start to pull profits and you start to realize gains is the minute you're gonna have to start paying taxes. So in reality, you might be thinking, oh cool, let's take some money and let's just keep it for ourselves. But the government's gonna say, hold up, wait a minute, I'm gonna take some of that. So you'd much rather it be that you you have a bigger pie that you're able to pull and the government of course would like that as well for yourself <clears throat> for you to be able to um, survive off of then a smaller amount that you're only going to be able to pull profits and it's not only strangling your growth but it's also of course going to be not as much that you're taking because you're already getting hit on uh, with taxes for that so you know, overall, these are the most important things I would say you need to consider. And of course, this is a mini series. So there's so many things that I'm going to be talking about. But for this first part of it, um, it's really just going to be breaking down the first steps of opening up your own local game store and these important steps and things you need to consider if this is something you are truly passionate about. And of course, it's gonna take a lot of time, it's gonna take a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And of course, as well, if you have a lot of creative ideas and projects that you're trying to run, you're gonna need other people to help you with that that have a very similar vision or can just be an asset to the team when it comes to growing your local game store. And of course, if all these things fall perfectly into place and you're able to acquire each one of these steps in a manner that allows you to continue that growth um, without any hiccups or road bumps along the way, then of course you can run a successful local game store. There is money to be made there, but it is a obstacle to say the least. And you're going to have to go through a lot of trials and tribulations just to get to that point. So um, like I said before, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first month of our store being opened. These are all the things that I've experienced that I've learned along the way. Some of these, of course, or I should say a good portion of it. This was an expectation going into it. But of course, there's always been some things that we've continuously learned and we're continuously going to learn as we continue the growth of our overall local game store. But now, wrapping up the video, as always, if you want to enter into our weekly giveaways, make sure you leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We post content each and every week for you to comment and like on. And of course, we've got multiple winners each and every week, so you've got multiple opportunities to both enter and win. If you want to help support the channel, you can check out the links down in the description below. We have a Patreon for you to join a lot of our awesome tiers, including access to wholesale product and other amazing amazing um, technical analysis or just tools to be able to help make uh, future predictions as well as just general analytical data points for you to know what to invest in. If you want to check out our official Pokemon USA product, you can do so on our website, PokemonUSA.com. Take advantage of some of the awesome mystery packs we have. And then of course as well, if you want to support the local game store, you can do so by checking out E4 Cards and more to check out our single selection. And lastly, check out our Discord. Link's down in the description below for that if you wanna be a part of the awesome community of Pokemon fans and lovers that are constantly sharing deals on the best product around on the internet. But now that we finally wrapped everything up, thank you guys all so much for watching. Until then, I will see you all on Monday. Peace.